وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار All praise is due to Allah, we praise him, we seek his aid and we ask for his forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evils of ourselves and the evil consequences of our actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, none can lead astray, and whomsoever Allah leaves to go astray. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship but Allah the Almighty alone. And I bear witness that Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, is his servant and his messenger. O you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared and die not, except in a state of submission to your Lord as Muslims. O mankind, be dutiful to your Lord who created you from a single person. And from him he created his wife, and from them both he created many men and women. And fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights and observe the rights of your kin. Surely Allah is ever and all watcher over you. O you who believe, keep your duty to Allah. Fear him and speak the truth. He will direct you to righteous deeds and will forgive your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has indeed attained a great achievement. The best words are those of Allah and the best guidance is that of Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. And the worst things in the religion are the newly invented matters. And all the newly invented matters in religion are an innovation and bid'ah and every bid'ah is misguidance. If a woman works hard in her own restaurant or in her family business, cooking like food for the customers, then she's a hard working woman and she deserves admiration and respect. And if a woman or a man for that matter serves food in their family owned business as a restaurant serving others then they are hard-working people and they are looked up to because they're doing such a great contribution. There are achievers. We admire their hard work and their grit. If there is someone who works as a janitor, male or female, cleaning toilets in different places or different buildings, these are hard-working people. They deserve our respect our appreciation and they are constructive contributing members of the society but if a mother cooks for her children cooks for her husband if she cleans the toilets at home and she cleans her house then she's an idle member of society she's a sit at home mom someone who's not contributing if a teacher male or female they teach students at a school then these are admirable members of society who sacrifice their time, their knowledge their expertise, they sacrifice other options, other career options in life they deserve our admiration and support unlikely so, truly so but when a mother teaches her own children, dedicates her time to teach her children or when a father contributes to the education of their children, these people are not contributing to society. How retarded could we get as humans in our thinking? When it's your children, when it's your husband, when it's your wife, then contributing is an embarrassment. It's looked down upon. Cleaning, cleaning the, the toilets at home is something not to be admired and respected. It's a waste of life. But when you do it in a public building or in a business, then you are the pinnacle of society. You're an example for others to follow. When someone works as a secretary, obeying orders blindly, doing everything for their boss. This is a hard-working person. They deserve our respect. These are good examples. But when a wife helps out her husband at the house, taking care of it, keeping it clean, looking after the children, educating their own children, she's an embarrassment for society. 
that's what we are being fed. And that's what we have swallowed. Now, even mothers, full-time mothers, who admirably sacrifice any other choice, when they fulfill their, these obligations and these tasks, from a position of inferiority, they feed that kind of reversed logic even to their children. Many mothers are fulfilling the duties of motherhood and of being a guardian of that house or someone who looks after the house and after the household. But they do that with shame and embarrassment. And that sort of rubs off on the children. They don't respect the position of the mother. The girls don't want to be like their mother. They want to be a secretary. They want to serve someone else. If you serve your husband, if you support your husband and help your husband, you're an embarrassment. But if you serve a stranger and you make money for that, then you are someone to look up to. It's the best career in the world when you educate your own children. Because when you pre prepare these little creatures, these innocent human beings, when you feed them, when you clean them, when you clothe them, when you educate them, when you teach them about life, when you prepare them for life, when you connect them to the purpose of their creation, when you nurture them emotionally, when you help them build a healthy sense of self, That's an embarrassment? That's a waste of time? That's a waste of life? Honestly, what could be more retarded than this kind of logic? But when you do any of those single things for strangers and you get paid for it, then it is something that is admirable, something beautiful. You become an exemplary should be followed that tells you how the love of material possessions the love of finance and money and wealth has seeped into our being and our thinking and there are many mothers full-time mothers around the world that feel ashamed about the position they are in but they have no other choice why because we've swallowed that brainwashing Now, what it means to be Muslim is not just we offer our ritualistic acts of worship. It means we live by the guidance of Allah. We live by the truth. When a person fulfills this most noble career and job in the world, that is the job of the prophets. They educate, they teach, they guide, they help people overcome their problems. They teach people about Allah and about the purpose of their creation. What does life mean? What are you supposed to do with this life? How do you handle atrocities, hardships, challenges? How do you handle everyday situations? How do you carry yourself? How do you behave in the world? How can you be a human being? What could be, what could be more noble than fulfilling that job, than teaching, inspiring? What could be better than that? You know, many of the celebrities we look up to are influencers. What is an influence? Someone who's teaching people how to live, how to behave, how to deal with specific situations. But there is no job that, that really harbors more influence and more variety of tasks than the noble job of being a mother or a father. But now we have learned to see achievement only outside the house. If it's in the house, it's a waste. And no wonder children are suffering. No wonder the younger generation is religiously, spiritually, emotionally, mentally struggling. They're challenged. They have an identity crisis. Why? Because we look down upon motherhood. We look down upon fatherhood. We look down upon the best job that was ever 
in the human experience, that was ever there in the human experience. And it's not enough that we call ourselves Muslims and that we pray, but yet we don't accept Allah's guidance. We let all of that influence change our priorities and reverse our definitions. No wonder that the future generation is struggling, is struggling. Is struggling even to be a father or see value in being a father or see value in being a mother. Speak to any teenager girl and she ask her, what do you want your future to be? She'll tell you, I want to be CEO, I want to be a secretary, I want to be a firewoman. I want to be this, I want to be that, I want to be an entrepreneur, I want to be an influencer. But how often would you hear, I want to be a mother? Why? Because the whole name, the whole title of a mother has been associated with so much shame and embarrassment. And it's the most noble task or undertaking a person could ever fulfill in this life. And the problem is that we don't see value in this. Yes, we lecture about it. We theorize about it. We say, yeah, mothers, 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 especially fathers love to do this. But we feel the shame attached to it. We've swallowed that poison. And what we need to do is change that. Change that within us. You don't have to lecture about it. You don't have to invite to it. You don't have to advise about it. You don't have to even write about it. Just you yourself fix your logic about it. That's all you need to do. And that's, that's such a great achievement if you manage to do that. Because with all of the the, 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 the barrage of information and brainwashing that is poured on us, that is thrown and shot at us. It's very hard to stand firm with the truth and appreciate what it means to be a parent who truly, truly upholds their responsibility, whether a father or a mother. We think our responsibility is to work outside and then send our kids for daycare, kindergarten, uh, school, activities, etc. And we have the least involvement. And when they grow up with so much resentment, so much pain and estrangement, distance from the parents, we wonder why. Why? Because you were never part of their life. You were never f there for them when they were searching for their identity, for their sense of self. You were never there for them when they struggled and they needed a listening ear, someone that they could confide in and feel comfortable with. You never gave them that unconditional love that as a parent you are there for them. Your relationship with them was always conditional. Why? Because you didn't want them to embrace the embarrassment of being a mother. You wanted them to be a successful businessman, right? or a successful secretary or a hard-working entrepreneur that's honor, that's appreciation that's achievement but a mother even a mother does not want her daughters to be a mother that's the, edu that's the education we're giving our kids, our children so we have the males when they grow up they don't appreciate their wives for the work they do I think, hey, you're just sitting at home. Sit at home, mother. That's, who, that's what you are. You're doing nothing. No respect. Then the mother herself does not even appreciate that. She dreams of leaving the house. Doing something outside. Then she can be a human being worthy of respect. But educating the kids, taking care of them, feeding them, preparing them for life. She does that with an absent mind. She's not even there when she does that. She turns into a machine because it's, it's an embarrassment. And then we wonder why, look at the whole, all of these segments in society. Mental illness, skyrocketing, emotional issues. People are walking in the street talking to themselves. People are unhealthy emotionally, psychologically. Why? Because we have the way the world is, what, the direction in which the world is heading is treating us as machines, we're robots. We're supposed to produce money. 
It's all, there's, there's, there's a price tag on everything, on time, on seconds, on, on where you live and what you do and where you spend your time and even on your thoughts, there's a price tag. And if anything does not match that system of pricing, it does not translate into money, it's worthless. And we Muslims have bought into this. We've swallowed that hook, line and sinker. But we like to brag that we are people of principle. We are people who live by guidance, divine guidance. We like to fool ourselves. When we have swallowed that embarrassment, it's time for, for genuine reflection. We need to be brutally honest. We need to be honest with ourselves. Otherwise, I'm telling you, we're jeopardizing the future of our kids, the identity of our kids, the, the health of the hearts of our kids. We're jeopardizing that. No, you can teach them probably Quran. You can help them memorize stuff. But unless you teach them the true principles and you live according to these principles, there is dissonance. There is discrepancy between what you say and what you do. And that will damage the, the, the spirit and the heart of your kids. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the truth and help us fulfill our obligations in a way that pleases him. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in wa ba'du. If you look at the best of humanity, these are the prophets and messengers. As Abdullah bin Mas'ud said, Inda Allah nadhara fi qulub al-ibad, fawajada quluba Muhammadin khayra qulub al-ibad, fastafahu li risalatih. Allah looked at the hearts of humanity. So the heart of Prophet Muhammad, the best of the heart, the best of hearts. So he chose him for the best mission. The best mission is the mission of the prophets and messengers. And if you carefully study what a mother does, or even what a, a, a devout, committed father does, it's actually a reflection, it's an echoing of the job and the tasks of prophets and messengers. Teaching, education, helping people understand what life is, what their life is about, and how, getting them ready, preparing them for life to be able to travel this journey of life and traverse this terrain of this, of, of this dunya to be able to make it back to Allah. So they can live with dignity and they can live upon devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the job of the prophets. And a father and a mother, that's what they do, specifically the mother, that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when a man came and asked him, man ahaqqu nasi bi husni sahabati, who's the person most deserving of my companionship, of my kindness, of my love, of my time, that I take them as my closest companion, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, your mother, ummuk. Qala thumma man, then who? He said, ummuk, your mother again. Then he said, then who? Qala ummuk, your mother, third time. Qala thumma man, qala abuk. Then who, the fourth time, he said, it's your father. Because of the noble, that's the best job in the world. That's the best job description in the world. But put your heart in it. See the value of that. A man came to the Prophet ﷺ, he wanted to, to, to sacrifice his life for the sake of Allah. Do something that was so selfless. The Prophet ﷺ asked him about his, his mother, if she was alive. Is your mother alive? He said, yes. Because the man wanted something that would get him to paradise. He said, He said, hold on to her feet. Because Jannah is there. Jannah is right there. At the feet of your mother. Why? Because she does the best noble job ever. There's no career. There's no career line better than that. And we should not swallow the lie. That motherhood is insignificant or a waste of time. Actually, if anyone wants their life to be the most meaningful and to offer the best contribution, the best value or return on investment when it comes to investing their life, there's nothing better than doing the tasks of what a mother does. And the beautiful thing, there's no money involved. It's so selfless, it's so pure, it's pure meaning and purpose. And it's more, it's the most noble. 
So it's an honor even for a father to be able to fulfill the, 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 what a mother is supposed to do or what a mother is offered in Islam to do. So the dignity and the privilege that Allah gave a mother, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even protected the mother from having to earn a living and win the bread. Why? So that she could have full, her time fully for the best opportunity ever that could be given to a human being. A father is not even offered this privilege. Why? Because he has to go and work. Even if he wants to spend time with his kids, he has to go and be the breadwinner. But her mother said, she saved all of that. You're given that full privilege. All distractions are taken away from you. Put your head, put your attention there, put your mind there. I give you this on a silver plate. But it takes a lot of sacrifice. And that's why it's the most noble. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us understand these principles properly and make us good fathers and mothers and help us rectify our states. اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولمن لهم حق علينا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أصلح أحوالنا اللهم اهدي قلوبنا اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين